I can actually see myself incorporating much more of resin 3D printing in my future projects and builds. <laughs> I guess we better start building something then. <laughs> Hey folks, my name is Leith, and I want to welcome you to my channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint miniatures or craft awesome terrain for the tabletop. Today, I'm going larger than ever before by making this Temple of Moor. In my last video, I mentioned that having a consistent 3D printer will help me, and oh boy, did I use it for this one. If you want to buy a GK2 printer and get 60 bucks discount, then check out the affiliate link down below or use the code DEVSDICE at check Check out. Let's get cracking. All right, so I had a bunch of this baby blue foam left, and this is quite bouncy, so it doesn't really make a good material for anything detailed. But to use it for bulk construction, as for this build, it was pretty perfect. So I decided to use it for the foundation of my dais or base or platform or whatever you want to call it. Now I chose to make this an octagon using some tools from Shifting Lands. Now, as you can see with the sheer size of this, it becomes a problem with the proxon. So I had to actually cut it down into smaller pieces because I knew I wanted to have some archways in the four directions across the entire platform. So cutting it to pieces and then gluing it back into pieces. And that is why I have all of these strange markings here and there, just so I can see which piece fits where. Now, one of the pieces, I'm going to use the circular jig just to cut out a nice hole that I then can cut out the end lips and it will become a nice sort of alcove. Once this final piece was in, you could sort of start seeing the basic shape I'm after. And I thought for an instant here that, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So out comes her scale a lot, prouncing around proudly. One thing that bothered me, though, was the fact that it felt very high. It's three inches thick, and I felt like that was too much, to be honest. So I had to cut the entire thing in half in order to get it through the proxon and then shave off an inch from the bottom. And then I glued it back together again. And clearly, Sir Scalelot was hopping around too much, so I, for some reason, changed the mini to a uh, half-orc uh, barbarian. The stairs, I've done this a multitude of times. Essentially, the gist of it is that you do 5 millimeters layers incrementally, and then that will function as your base for gluing on bricks. I also made some plans for myself. I'm not sure if I want to give these out or not because they're very bespoke and doesn't make necessarily that much sense. And I'm going to glue these onto thicker cardstock. So the first step to that is obviously to cut out the actual printout and then glue it on with some, I'm not sure what this is called, stick glue, kids glue, just so it's attached there for a moment. Then, of course, uh, the painstaking uh, job of cutting out all of these shapes. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you was that I just scored the top there. Similar to how I usually use foam core, you can use that as a hinge for the corners, like so. Another version of this is if you have two separate pieces is, is of course to tape them together and in all earnest this works as good if not better than using the scoring method. I generally like to just try to think about the construction of this sort of complicated thing in stages and I, I'm looking to create the core. Now here is one of the more popular Mordheim STL models that's out there. As you can see, I chose to just extend it by duplicating it because I wanted to protrude a little bit on the inside and on the outside. And my measurements are usually with uh, five millimeter bricks. And here my brain had a meltdown.
Essentially what had happened is that I had uh, gone back and forth between uh, inches and centimeters, so my file in Illustrator was way too large. Thankfully my prints that I printed out were perfect as I intended them to be, it was just that I had to redo everything, but you get the gist of it. Measure twice, I guess, <laughs> print once. Now, once I had my measurements under control, you can see that the windows fit very snugly. I barely had to actually glue them in. But me being the better safe than sorry kind of guy, I did glue them in uh, using some super glue and activator. And you can see I've also glued in the entrance, which was kind of nice. And everything's going to be very much skulls and so on. Once I have it in place, I start gluing it in using some hot glue. One of the things that bothered me a little bit about the shape was the stairs, how protruding they were. And I felt like, mm, that doesn't feel right. So you know what? Since we're at the modeling stage still, I just cut out some shapes and glued them next to the stairs. Now here comes, I think, the second floor. Well, technically, I guess it's the third floor. And this this time I didn't measure wrong, so, so they all fit quite snugly. And as you can see, these are also some STLs that you can find for free. I don't know who exactly created them, to be honest. Uh, I got these from a friend, but supposedly they are out there in cyberspace. So look and you shall find. Now for the third floor, this was a little bit tricky. I used a straight edge just to make sure that the wall was actually quite straight and then I hot glued it in to the floor and the adjacent wall and it actually worked quite nice and before you know it you will have a full octagon or in this case I guess um, a broken octagon. Now, there is another floor, of course, because why wouldn't there be? This is Mordheim. Verticality is a thing. I start by gluing in that as a roof slash floor and just dry fitted everything, and it looked quite nice. Here's one of the things that I modeled. I knew I wanted to have some interesting, uh, well, I guess we could call these pillars. Now, as usual, I printed exactly the right amount that I needed, and I didn't have any print failures with the uniformation. Again, I am so happy that I have a dependable 3D printer because I can do these weird things. And you might not know it, but I do have a background actually as a 3D artist in the early 90s. So uh, doing simple things like skulls and stuff like that, I actually managed to do. So I basically modeled these and I'm going to give these out. Uh, link is in the description below for all of the models that I've created and you can use them as much as you want. Now, I have to be honest here, I was a little bit unhappy about the alcove still. They looked in their shape a little bit off, and I figured out that what I really wanted was a larger alcove. I wanted a half circle, and here you can see the comparison between the two, and for me, the first one that I actually cut out looked a heck of a lot better. Now, when it comes to the flooring, I'm going to use some XPS uh, tiles that I milled out. And these are about a centimeter times a centimeter. And then I would guess like two millimeters thick. I didn't want to offset the measurements that much because generally when I make terrain, I like to think of it as it's on grid, as I call it, meaning that each floor is X inches high, and that means that you can easily calculate, you know, fall damage and such. Here you can see that I always do the bottom bricks using hot glue. The reason for that is that hot glue becomes cooler quicker, i.e. it is uh, secure very much quicker than white glue. And once it is, I can actually use white glue on top of it. Here is what I mentioned before about covering all of the stairs with bricks. And if your bricks are about five millimeters thick, then they should fit quite nicely. 
Another thing that I modeled uh, partially, I, I've used a bunch of models here and these can be downloaded on the internet as well. I printed these out as some sort of crypt alcove thingamajigs. things. I thought it looked kind of cool. So I'm just going to hot glue that in and believe me, those pieces of resin, that's a big hunk of resin right there. <laughs> and uh, I glued in four of them in total. The flooring inside I try to sort of keep to some sort of structure and make it look like it was meant to be, and in the end I thought it looked fairly decent. And as you can see this piece is so big so the turntable had to be manual style. Here's another interesting detail I did, uh, and I modeled this myself as well, the buttresses for the top floors. A small mistake here is that, of course, I would have wanted the buttresses on all eight of the octagon walls. But since some of my windows were so high up, they simply didn't fit. So I chose to do an artistic choice there and say, well, perhaps only the diagonal walls. Luckily, we only had two of them, so I only had to print two. Here you can see I'm starting to sculpt out the actual foundation that's going to be for some statues next to the stairs. And as you can see, I am doing the bottom row of bricks using hot glue, and then on top of that I just used white glue. But every once in a while I feel like I get a little bit spicy with the white glue and I try my best to do those arches. It actually does work and I have to say that this white glue it's quite quick drying so it is I, perhaps more like tacky glue I would argue. Large grain gel is something I bought a while ago uh, and I have a tub of that and I was going to use it for the buildings that I usually do for Mordheim but I thought it was too rough so I used it for the walls inside the crypt instead. Here I'm just gluing in a stone cap that will be the platform for all of the statues to come. These bricks are quite interesting. These are L-shaped bricks that I use to cover the transition between the wall bricks and the ground bricks. And they worked out quite nicely, I have to say. Now, the inside of this is a pain in the buttocks, but you can do it. I, I believe you. <laughs> Now, one of the things that uh, I have to do when I do the buildings is I have to work in stages. So once I had the first floor glued in, in terms of bricks, I glued in the platforms. And I knew I wanted to think about playability here as well. I wanted each floor to have some gameplay spaces. These I clamped down onto my pillars there, which worked quite nicely, I have to say. It's so wonderful that I can use a resin 3D printer to create the, the things that I honestly can't really do simply with, with my normal crafting tools. Bricking all of this took its time, I can assure you, and it won't look perfect uh, everywhere. And I think that is sort of a point with individual bricks. I am happy with it. Now, obviously, I needed to cut out the excess of bricks for the circular window. And now I'm going to start on the, let's see here, the third floor. And as usual, I go in with hot glue and then I use white glue for all of the rest of the bricks. And one thing very important, I feel, is to have a brush with some water and just brush away the excess of white glue because white glue can leave quite nasty shapes which you don't want to be dry brushing later on. Here you can see I'm using coffee stir sticks as my main structure for the flooring and for the top I decided to go with white glue but for the bottom it's not as important that everything looks spick and span so I went with hot glue just to expedite this process a little bit faster. Now this is Mordheim, and by design, everything needs to be ruined, so that means uh, tearing up a whole bunch of planking to make it look uh, properly ruined. I love Mordheim for this reason, to be honest, because, and I might be come, come across as a bit arrogant now, but 
when it comes to building terrain, Mordheim is really, to me, the pinnacle of it because you need to have an inside and an outside. You can't just make something that looks good from the outside, call it done. You have to think about the inside. Here you can see that I'm using some uh, coffee stir sticks and wider, um, I'm not sure what they're called, popsicle sticks to create uh, the fencing or the railing, I guess, for the top floor. And I'm using quite a lot of hot glue here uh, because honestly, uh, you can't really see the seams all that much and it's all gonna be painted quite nicely. And here I'm just gluing in some 5mm balsa wood just to give me a lip to glue it in. Now I did like the little detail about filing down the space in between all of the panels because that gave it a very particular look. Once I had all of these done, I measured them and glued them in using hot glue. Now this was a special moment for me, starting to glue everything together. And as you can see, just happy to be able to actually lift that up and feel that, oh, it's all actually stuck to each other. Awesome, it's starting to, to take shape. Now I'm gonna use the circular jig to create something that I was in all earnest quite afraid of. And this is gonna be the dome that goes up top. And as you can see, I cut various shapes and I'm gonna use these to sort of make layers of detail. First off, I decided to glue them into an X sort of uh, shape, and then I glued in the diagonal supports. Now on top of each and every one of these, I wanted to have, uh, I guess, bevels, or just gives it a little bit more detail and also makes it a little bit less flimsy, so it strengthens it up. And here you can see what I was thinking of. I'm doing some dry fitting and I'm quite happy with that. Now, one more cosmetic detail. I just cut out another octagon that I then sliced into thinner pieces and also uh, sliced into smaller pieces just to have some sort of cap on the middle of the, the, the structure for the, the dome. And as per usual, I'm gonna glue that in using some hot glue. Now, the actual dome, this was a problematic thing. I tried several materials. I tried plastic card, I tried paper, but in the end, uh, in the corner of my workshop, I had some, I think it's called hobby foam or craft foam. This actually was the perfect solution for me. And now everything is in one piece, amazing. One thing that I wanted to do was to really come in with some Mod Podge on the dome itself because it's quite flimsy and I wanted to make sure that specifically the Hobby Foam, well, I guess had a good coating of Mod Podge so I could, it could be painted. At this point, I'm gonna start priming everything and that took its time as well, to be honest. And I don't know if you understand how large this uh, piece is. It's easily over a foot wide and I think it's about almost 16 inches from the bottom to the top. Here's a little bit of interesting thing. I decided to not go the usual route of my brown undercoating. I used this green-blue color to give, especially up top, give a little bit of a different undercoating because I wanted, I, I knew that I wanted this building to look similar, but different. And you can see I'm coming in with the usual paints I, I, I usually use for all of my Mordheim buildings. But in this process, I started thinking more about, no, I want this to look brighter. I want it to look like everything is made out of either it's whitewashed or they've used particular bricks. So the highlight color that I previously used, I actually use now as a base coat, which I knew was gonna probably be a little bit scary and problematic, but I went with it. Now that meant that of course my 
highest dry brush color or highlight color had to be stark white, which was quite unusual for me. And I have to say at this point, it was quite daunting. And here you can see um, <laughs> I was trying out different metallic colors, but I eventually I did like the bronze. And but to me, honestly, it didn't make sense. So I solved it by having them painted up as iron. And then, you know what? Let's rust them up. That'll give me that nice sort of complementary color to the teal uh, colors of the panels, which I was after. And here you can see I'm going back and forth and quite quickly between certain things in terms of the paint. I knew also that I had to try some streaking using the strong tone. And this I did mostly to be able to gauge whether or not this is going to look good. And it did. So I turned my attention to the statues that I have mentioned a couple of times. I wanted these to be copper or bronze statue that had been patinaed or weathered quite a lot. I created my own mixture of two different colors. Now, my tip for you to do this is work in layers. I think I actually used that wash three or four times, drying it in between. And then at the end, I stipple on some verdigris and some bronze again, just to pick out some of the details. And then I glue in the statues and it's looking quite nice. Here comes my uh, magnum opus. Um, I wanted to have a stained glass window, so I modeled this raven, which is a sign of Mor, and my idea was simply to use some UV resin, drop it into each cell, move it into place with a toothpick, and then shoot it with some UV rays. This was actually quite easy but I think either it, I, I am very skillful in doing this for a first time or I got lucky because this took time. I think this entire process probably took me two hours of meticulously fiddling with the resin. But the result looks bloody amazing. Now, I haven't used AK Corrosion Texture before, but I remember at my friendly local game store, Alpha Spiel, they did really recommend this. So I used it for the roof, and I really love the texture of this. And I'm just picking out some bits here with some riser rust, and I'm doing some dry brushing on the actual crypts down below, just to give them a little bit more definition. And here I'm doing a very heavy overbrush of all of the wood just to make it look weathered. My process of this is going very much back and forth with different products like rust and the different shaders. Here comes the second to last, I think, weathering step. I'm going to use strong tone, dark tone and military green. And I'm going to focus the dark tone at the bottom strong tone all over the place and then some military green wherever it looks like vegetation might have grown. While we watch me do some postering, graffiti and blood splatter, I want to take the opportunity to thank my patrons for their support. And a special shout out goes to my champion and legend level patrons. Akasen27, Andreas Wienberg, Angata, Arjen Angenent, Bo Algren, Jason Chastain, Lawrence Davis, Madners, Magnus Solberg, Grill Singer D, Luander, Marc Anton Laramy, Niklas Svenedlind, and Oliver Granlund. Thank you so much, guys. You're awesome. Now, with that, just some final touches with some blood splatter and getting the stained glass window into place. Now, by far, this is my largest terrain piece to date. 
I really left everything in the ring. I gave it my best shot. And just so you know, this was inspired a lot by a build I saw somebody created a while back in the late 90s. I think it was a Games Workshop employee. The Temple of Mor does exist in the most major cities of the Empire, and so it does as well in Mordheim. I really didn't have a lot to go on except that it usually is round octagonal shaped and has a dome. But I have to say for me I am so happy with the fact that I managed to blend 3D printed details with some XPS sculpted foam and I think it still looks cohesive, it looks good. It looks different than my other terrain but it looks like it's part of the same world. And I'm really happy that I challenged myself with this build. And as I said, left everything in the ring. Now, hopefully you like this build as well. If you did, then please give it a like or comment. And if you want to see any more of my videos, then YouTube recommends that you should be having a look at these. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video.